the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk that. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time, and it's time to talk about the biggest X factors on the offensive side of the ball. I'm curious who everyone came up with, who we think is the biggest X factor for the 49ers, especially this season. Well, there's just so many questions. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. There's a lot of guys on this team that could make a big difference on the offensive side of the ball this year, from rookies to vets to free agents to draft picks, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm curious what you guys are going to say as well. Right now in the comments section, start spamming your predictions for who each of us has. Which lineman did horse pick? <laughs> is it Jalen Hurd for Anthony, which you probably know it is? And who is it going to be for me? Spam them. We'll see how many of you get stuff right. I'm going to be very interested and curious to see. But, but guys, this is a very interesting topic because as Horse just said, there's a lot of options, a lot of different things that can happen here. A lot of different routes we could go. And... Mm -hmm. We'll let you go first, because I think a lot of people are, are sitting down there typing Jalen Hurd. <laughs> are you going to make every single member of chat just a prediction maestro, and they're going to get this 100% correct, or do you got a curveball for everybody? Yeah, I, uh, the catcher's putting down the two on this one. It's the curveball coming, oh. um, because I would say that, though I think Jalen Hurd's going to be an X factor, the X factor for, for him is still the injuries, whether he can overcome them. If he gets on the field 100%, he will be an X factor. But I am going to go with Debo Samuel because last year was very apparent, very clear that when Debo Samuel is on the field, this offense changes the things that they can do with him, uh, whether it's jet motions, fly sweeps. If they get him out there running a horizontal offense where he can get the ball in space and be able to create um, playing in the backfield. I mean, there's just too many things you can do with this guy. Um, when you're running all the zone, the zone running schemes, when you put this guy out there, then all of a sudden you run the RPOs and he catches the ball better than anyone on those slant passes and is able to turn up field. Um, in the NFC Championship, he almost ran over a Green Bay guy on an RPO and you know took it to the house, the safety. Um, so there's just so many things you can do with him. And you notice the difference right away when he was in the game last year against the, you know, the Rams and those kind of teams where he would just take over. And then once he was out, you seen that the team just completely changed, the offense completely changed. And so we need Debo Samuel on the field. The things that he can do are unmatched, maybe except for Jalen Hurd. And that is something the 49ers need in their offense. Kyle Shanahan absolutely needs this guy. That's why he went out and got him, used a second round pick on him a couple years ago. And he unlocks this 49ers offense bigger than any other player. But I'm curious to see if you guys think there's somebody else that impacts more than Debo Samuel. Um, that's a good choice. And I don't know if my guy impacts more but I'd say it's a pretty close thing here, is that um, I picked Raheem Mostert. And Raheem Mostert is so big because, just like Debo Samuel, when Raheem Mostert was hurt last year, you saw the difference in the offense. They're, they lost the big playability in the run game. Um, Jeff Wilson ran well for parts, but he also got hurt. Um, and the offense just wasn't the same. Moster is dangerous. He can take the ball to the house at any second. He's recorded three of the five fastest miles per hour in the league, you know, during live play in the last, is it two years or three yeah. years? The last two years. He's, he's just a dynamic player. They need him on the field. I mean, he's not a guy that's going to run the rock 30 times for you, but if they have him on the field for 12 to 15 carries, that makes their offense much more dangerous much more explosive and what comes with that is once he's ran off a couple of those is the play action game and Kyle gets that play action game going whether it's Jimmy or Trey Lance you know easing the rookie in or helping Jimmy out either guy could really use the help so I, I think it's huge that he stays healthy and has a good year. Man, that's that's good uh, both of your guys is, I mean Debo especially in the in the horizontal aspect of the game Raheem Mostert the big playability and just the fact that any single touch, any single carry, if he gets through first level um, untouched and he's getting to second level full speed, it's pretty much, it's a home run. 
whether he's taking it to the house or whether he's going 40 or 50 yards downfield for a big play and changing the entire field position and momentum swing of a game, um, both guys can can add. They just add so many issues and so many things for the opponents to, to cover. Um, and this is why the next guy for me is the one that's the X factor because it's the one aspect of the game that we have yet to accomplish yet, and that's why my X factor for this offense is Brandon Ayuk uh, because he has to be able to stretch the field and do more than just the intermediate stuff. Um, we saw how well he is, especially in his route running, getting open over the middle of the field. The big catches, we saw him take some small catches and break him to the house. The little screen against the Eagles comes to mind for every 49ers fan from last year. But he can do so much more than that. And we know he can stretch the field, and we know he can get downfield, and we know he can be a big route running threat. We've seen the, the route against the Seahawks is a perfect example. He ran that little corner post across the middle of the field, wide open, and if a better throw, ball is thrown there by, I believe it was Nick Mullins at that time. Actually, I think it might have been C.J. Beathard. Anyway, if one of our backup quarterbacks makes a better throw down the field, Brandon Ayuk's housing that because he had three steps on the guy and he had to come back and fight for the ball instead of being able to catch it, run it in space without slowing down, which is a key thing for all the 49ers wide receivers. Every single one of them can do this. Ant talks about this constantly with this receiving core is that's one of their strengths. They don't have to slow down to catch the ball. They're very good at even if the ball's a little bit behind them, being able to catch it without losing a lot of speed. And that means... Uh, more, more times and more situations where if you're catching the ball 5, 10 yards downfield at full speed and you had defensive players not in the right spots, you're going to be able to make moves, hit seams, gaps quicker, split a defense in half, and take it to the house. Um, and, and Brandon Ayuk adds that aspect and that dynamic to this team, especially vertically down the field. Um, if this team can, can tap into that vertical stretch a little bit, getting down the field with some passes a little bit more, and some of that falls on Jimmy, right? We, that's what we got Trey Lance for, as we know, and people are fairly comfortable. Shanahan's comfortable with his ability to push the ball downfield. At some point, this aspect is going to come into the 49ers offense, and once that does, it's going to change everything because teams are going to have to focus so much, like you talk about, Ant, horizontal, horizontal, yeah. horizontal, and now you can hit vertical whenever you want. That spells problems for defenses. It's too much to have to account for and too much to have to plan for and prep for. Brandon Ayuk could be the key to taking this offense from what it is, which was almost a 30-point game offense, to pushing it over and getting that one extra touchdown so that this thing goes from a 30-point offense to a 36-point offense. Yeah, and, you know, right now there's kind of a box. You know, it's kind of the 18-yard, you know, line of scrimmage and then horizontal. That is the box that the 49ers play in because of what Jimmy Garoppolo can do. That's where George Kittle and all of them are forced to operate, and they do a very good job. And I think George Kittle is somebody we need to mention that sure. is also an X factor on this sure. team. Um, the energy and the intensity that he brings to every single play, not just in the pass game, but in the in the run game as well. But yeah, you're right about Trey Lance. Eventually, that is going to push to 25 yards, and you're going to have an open area where these guys are able to operate, and that's when the big-time double moves and those type of plays are going to be opened up. And he's going to be able to hit, you know, deep passes. Will Jimmy take more shots this year? I think he will. I think he's going to be more free and play different than he's played. But you're still going to see all the rhythm passes. You're still going to see the quick release, getting these guys the ball in space. You're right. They catch the ball on the run without slowing down better than any wide receiver group in the NFL. This is the closest thing I've seen since the 80s when you used to see Taylor, Rice, and those guys catch the ball on the run and get going. Um so this is, this is going to be interesting because I think a lot of times these little RPOs, he's going to be able to hit Debo and hit Brandon Ayuk, and they're going to get up the seam and be able to get you know free away from safeties and make, make touchdowns and make plays. So I am very excited about this offense. I'm very excited about these X factors that we talked about. Horse is completely right about Raheem Mostert. Um, Raheem Mostert does unlock this offense big time in the run game. But the reason that I think that it's they've insulated themselves in case of an injury with him with the two rookie running backs that they got, especially Trey Sermon. He is going to carry a load this year. Not as much as I think some people think, but I do think he's going to carry a load. And this this offense is going to be fun to watch. And I actually can't wait to break down the ins and outs of the offense mm -hmm. and just how Kyle Shanahan is going to approach it, how Mike McDaniel is going to approach it, um, because that is that's the funnest part of football is breaking down the X's and O's. Yeah, the, the receivers, like you said, um, they're just as important as most. Are, um, both Debo and Ayuk, you know, have got to make some plays on their own a little bit because we don't really push the ball downfield. So they kind of have to catch the ball on the run, maybe make a guy or two miss and make a play to have a big play. They're both very capable of doing that. They've both shown it. Debo has shown the ability to go deep a little bit. Um, he had the nice long one against the Ravens for a touchdown to open the game 
in 2019. Yeah. Um, I know IU caught a couple deep balls last year. So I, it's really exciting. Hopefully Jimmy can push the ball down the field a little bit more, like you said. Um, because if they get vertical passing game going, they're yeah. going to be almost impossible to stop. Well, and you know what, Jalen Hurd and some of the bigger receivers that they brought in oh. might also help him be more willing to go down the field if he has the trust that these guys are going to catch the ball. He had trust in Emmanuel Sanders, and he would go deep down the field to him. Sure. He has trust in George Kittle, but usually the deep passage to George Kittle is when he's wide open. But there are opportunities for those in the 49ers offense. So I'm curious when that starts to happen. Um, but unlocking all these guys and using all these guys to be – you know, great in the offense and great in these games. It, that's the funnest part, I think. Yeah. Kyle Shannon has definitely done a great job, him and John Lynch, of getting guys that everyone has to worry about. Think about it, We just talk about multiple X factors on this team in these games, and that's what defenses have to discuss. We, we have to stop Debo Samuel doing this. We have to stop Brandon Ayuk doing this. We have to stop George Kittle doing this. And they're not similar in what they do and the things that they're able to do with the ball in their hands which I think you can't say that. I mean, if you're talking about the Rams, for instance, and you're talking about Robert Woods and you're talking about, you know, Cooper Cup, it, you're not worried about some of the, the other things. You're not worried about them doing the same things that Debo Samuel is. You're not going to see Cooper Cup in the backfield. No. So there's less things that you have to plan for and less things that you have to be ready for. And I think that is the, the whole problem with playing the 49ers offense is the X factors are almost limitless at this point. Just the not unlimited, limitless. Oh, okay. Um, the guys that they have, and I yes, Russ was going to come. Yes, one hundred percent. I still wish I could talk about Jalen Hurd in this because he he's going to be a huge X factor. Hey, can we can we be honest though? I mean, you could have. I knew it. You could have, right? Yeah. You you could have made that. I knew it. You knew what? It was going to go to Jalen Hurd. It, it, <laughs> it should be about Jalen Hurd because I've doubled down on Jalen Hurd this year. It's true. He has doubled down on Jalen Hurd. And listen, let let us know what you think about these offensive X factors down below right now. Is it really the O-line? Did we not hit Ooh. on this at all? And Horse actually threw the biggest swerve of all, not picking the O-lineman. We want to hear from you. Let us know what you think about Debo. Let us know what you think about Ayuk. Let us know what you think about Mostert. Which one is actually the X Factor? Or is it Trey Lance and we're sleeping on this guy and he's starting week one? We want to hear from you down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You want to be here for this. You want to be here for this conversation. You don't want to miss any of this great content. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Share the video. So close. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to have options on who they can determine will be the X factor for the 49ers. I think a lot of people are going to say Trey Lance. And I think a lot of people are going to say George Kittle. Not sure. Kittles, but Kittle. And Not I think Kittles. that, you know, that would be fair. And that's somebody that could say, if you say Ross Dwelly, um, I, I, I know I know where you got that and where you're coming from. So it's not Ross Dwelly, but we do appreciate him on the show. Um, but yeah, leave us who it is and tell us why so we can have this conversation. I can guarantee there's going to be some great conversations. So jump onto the comment section and check them out because somebody will have a great comment. There's every single week, every single episode, there's something good. Josh Hokett. <laughs> Do you no. think he's the X Factor? Yeah, X Factor, maybe, X Factor, the practice squad. I think he's going to open his locker one day, and there's going to be a red tag sitting there waiting for him. Oh, poor Josh Hokett. At least he gets a red tag. And he's the X Factor because he opened up a locker for someone. Boom, baby. That makes him an X Factor? Mm -hmm. Nope, okay. it does not at all. Don't listen to that man for a second. <laughs> no. Let us know what you think down below. Join the Cutback crew today if you haven't already. And until next time, 49ers fans, you stay safe. And remember the right way. It's always the 49ers way. They're going to... Sorry. You're good. Who is Lua? And what have you done with him? That was actually my next X Factor. Was <laughs> That's nice. No. Ready? Yeah.